This lesson is about circular motion. We'll start with a review of acceleration. You don't have to write this part down. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Here's an example. Let's say that the car accelerated from 0 meters per second to 30 meters per second over the course of 5 seconds. We could use the equation a equals delta v over t, plug in our final velocity and our initial velocity and our time, and find that the acceleration of this car was 6 meters per second squared. This would be considered a linear acceleration, that is, acceleration in a straight line, that is due to the change in the magnitude or amount of the velocity. Let's take a look at another example of acceleration. Here's a car that's going to travel around a circular track. It starts out traveling 15 meters per second north and ends up traveling 15 meters per second west after two seconds. Since velocity is a vector, 15 meters per second west is different than 15 meters per second north. Therefore, we can say that the velocity changed. Let's try to calculate the acceleration. A equals delta V over T. We plug in our initial and our final velocities and our time, and we get an acceleration of zero. But the velocity did change, so it was accelerating. Hmm. The problem here is that the car is not accelerating because of a change of its magnitude of velocity. This is not an example of linear acceleration. This is an example of centripetal acceleration. We're still talking about the rate of change of velocity, but instead of the velocity changing because of a change in magnitude, it's changing because of a change in direction. This is specifically called centripetal acceleration, which is abbreviated with an A subscript C. Let's take a look at that example again. The car is traveling 15 meters per second, and the track has a radius of 30 meters. Now whether this is a full circle or not doesn't matter. The part of the track that it's on is circular with a radius of 30 meters. Here's a new equation specifically for centripetal acceleration. AC equals V squared over R. We can substitute in the velocity of 15 meters per second and the radius of 30 meters, and we find that the centripetal acceleration is 7.5 meters per second squared. This is not telling us how quickly the car is speeding up or slowing down. The car isn't getting 7.5 meters per second faster each second. This number represents how quickly the car is changing direction. How quickly does this car get from heading north to heading west? Any acceleration is caused by a force. Centripetal acceleration is caused by centripetal force. Centripetal force is to centripetal acceleration just as net force is to linear acceleration. You'll remember that net force is not one of the actual forces acting on the object. It's the result of all the forces that are acting on the object. Here are a few quick examples of net force. You don't have to write these down. Here's an object in free fall. It is experiencing a force of gravity only. That means that the net force is equal to Fg. A skydiver feels two forces a gravitational force down and a drag force up from the parachute. In this case, we would say that the net force is the force of drag minus the force of gravity. Here's an object on a surface. If the surface is frictionless, or if the object is on wheels, we might only have an applied force, in which case the net force is equal to the applied force. If there is friction, it would probably be directed opposite of the applied force, so the net force would be the applied force minus the force of friction. My point here is that the net force is not one of the forces that you draw on your free body diagram. The centripetal force is the same way. The centripetal force is the result of one or more forces that could be labeled on a free body diagram. For a car driving around a curved track, the force that keeps the car in the circular path, in other words, the force that prevents the car from skidding off the road, is the force of friction. In this case, we would say the centripetal force equals the friction force. For the moon in orbit around the Earth, the force that keeps the moon traveling in a circle is the force of gravity. In this case, we would say that the centripetal force equals the gravitational force. In this final example, an athlete participates in the hammer throw. The force that keeps the mass traveling in a circle is the tension force in the rope. 
In this case, we would say that the centripetal force equals the force of tension. The equation for centripetal force will look very familiar. The centripetal force is equal to the mass times the centripetal acceleration. This is basically Newton's second law, where the force and acceleration are specifically centripetal. We've already learned that the equation for centripetal acceleration is AC equals V squared over R. It can be very convenient to combine these equations into one that relates the centripetal force to the velocity and the radius of the circular path. If we substitute in V squared over R for AC, we get FC equals MV squared over R. Let's give this a shot. If the car in our previous example had a mass of 1600 kilograms, we could figure out the centripetal force acting on the car. FC equals MV squared over R, and we can substitute in our mass and velocity and radius to find that the centripetal force acting on this car is 12,000 newtons. It's very important for us to be able to answer this question as well. What force is providing the centripetal force in this situation? That is, what force that we could draw on a free body diagram is keeping this car traveling in a circular path? In this case, it's friction. Before we're done, let's take a look at the direction of some very important vectors. Centripetal is a word with Latin roots that means center seeking. That means that anything that is described as being centripetal should point toward the center. So centripetal force is a force vector that points toward the center of the circle, and centripetal acceleration is an acceleration vector that points toward the center of the circle. The velocity is a different story. The velocity of an object traveling in a circle is described as tangential, meaning like a tangent. If you don't remember, a tangent is a line that touches a circle at just one point. At this moment, the velocity of the car is in this direction. Let's summarize. Centripetal acceleration is due to a change of direction, and the equation is AC equals V squared over R. Centripetal acceleration is caused by centripetal force, which is basically the equivalent of net force for circular motion. The equation for centripetal force is FC equals MAC. We can combine this with the equation for centripetal acceleration to get FC equals MV squared over R. It's also important to remember the direction of the force, acceleration, and velocity vectors for an object traveling in a circle.